tonight. The Mets take on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Pitching for the Pirates tonight, right-hander Rick Russell, four and five, with an ERA of 3.08. And on the mound for the Mets, it's the doctor, Dwight Gooden, eight and two, with a league-leading ERA of 2.11. Well, hi, everybody. I'm Ralph Kiner, along with Tim McCarver and Steve Sabrisky, all set for the first game of a four-game series with the Pittsburgh Pirates. And the New York Mets have played the Pirates a total of seven ball games. They have won six of the seven. And here tonight is going to be Dwight Gooden on the mound. And the doctor goes in with a fine record of eight wins and two losses. He leads the National League in earned run average at 2.11. So Dwight Gooden, who has never lost to the Pittsburgh Pirates with a record of 6-0, and oh, will be going for the Mets. And going for the Pirates, Rick Russell. Rick Russell, a right-hander. He's got a good sinker ball and a good curve ball. I think importantly, Rick Russell has faced the Mets twice this year, and he has lost twice. Not only has he lost twice to the Mets, but he's lost twice to Dwight Gooden. He's 10 and 21 lifetime against New York. He's three and nine in this ballpark. And Dwight Gooden, Ralph, does have a tough assignment tonight because Rick Russell can flat get you out. Rick Russell was a comeback player of the year last year. He started the season in the minor leagues and then came up to the majors with Pittsburgh and had a fine year. But right now, let's go down to Steve Sabrisky and his special guest. Thanks, Ralph, and hi, everybody. Ray Knight, the Mets' third baseman, have... Ray would obviously like to go to the All-Star game, but he realizes under the circumstances his chances are slim. Well, Steve, I've been on two All-Star teams and, and two years that I thought that I should have been there. I didn't make it. Uh, obviously, um, on this ball club and not being on the ballot with Keith and Daryl and Gary pretty much going, I don't really think that I've gotten that much of a chance. And But, um, you know, my family's important to me, and those three days I'd like to spend with them if, if at all possible. But I'm one of those guys that always dreamed of making all-star teams, and if it happens, it'll really be neat. Well, Ray makes a good point in the fact that with Daryl Strawberry leading all National League voters and Gary Carter and Keith Hernandez leading at their positions in the National League, the chances of his being selected as an extra player by National League All-Star manager Whitey Herzog are very slim. Consequently, with the year that he's having, his only hope really is to receive enough write-in votes on the ballot in order to not be ignored. Well, obviously, Ray's had the kind of season deserving of all-star voting. So if you feel the same way, the best thing to do is to write his name in on your National League all-star ballot and make it impossible for them to ignore Ray Knight and the great season that he's had so far here in 1986. And we'll be back with the start of this first of a three-game series against the Pittsburgh Pirates right after this word from Budweiser. Playing second base is Wally Backman. At shortstop, Rafael Santana. The third base baseman is Ray Knight. In left field, George Foster. In center field, Mookie Wilson. And in right field, Daryl Strawberry. The catcher, Gary Carter. And on the mound, Dwight Gooden. 21 years of age, a record of 8-2, and two, an earned run average of 211. That leads the National League. Only 21 walks, 71 strikeouts, and 67 hits in 94 innings of pitching. And Dwight with a lifetime record against the Pittsburgh Pirates of six wins and no losses. And the lineup for the Pittsburgh Pirates, Barry Bonds, son of Bob, Bobby Bonds, playing center field and leading off. Bobby, of course, the instructor, the batting instructor for the Cleveland Indians. Joe Orsalak, the right fielder, batting second. Johnny Ray, the switch hitting second baseman, hitting third. Sid Bream at first base, batting fourth. R.J. Reynolds, the left fielder, batting fifth. Tony Pena behind the plate and will hit sixth. Jim Morrison, the third baseman, batting seventh. Rafael Belliard, the shortstop, hitting eighth. And Rick Russell on the mound, a good hitting pitcher. And the umpires for the game tonight. Joe West behind the plate. Steve Ripley, the umpire at first base. Billy Williams at second base. And Gary Darling up from the Pacific Coast League, the umpire at third. And as Barry Bonds to lead off. Bonds hitting 296. Three home runs, nine runs batted in. And as Tim pointed out, the son of Bobby Bonds, the outstanding player that played in both the National and the American League. And the first pitch by Gooden, ball one. Barry Bonds brings a five-game hitting streak into this game, hitting 353 for the five games. And Gooden's fastball swung on and missed. One ball, one strike. Gooden with a lifetime record of 49 wins and 15 losses. He has had... 13 game starts now with this one. And he comes back with a fastball, two balls, one strike. Gooden has had six complete games. Two of them have been shutouts. And in his last 56 game starts, he has a fabulous record. There's that good fastball. 
Two balls, two strikes. Bright has thrown four high fastballs. He came out buzzing tonight. I'll tell you, those four pitches as hard as any he's thrown all year. And he stays up high with the fastball and goes to a full count. In his last 56 games, as you look at Rick Russell, he has a record of 40 and 7. And he strikes out Bonds on fastballs, all fastballs to Barry Bonds. Fastball on the outside part of the plate, and Barry Bonds goes down. Six straight fastballs from Gooden. So now the batter will be Joe Orsilak. Joe hitting at 252 for the year. One home run, 11 runs batted in. Joe from Parsippany, New Jersey, against the Mets this year. He's hitting 278. His career average against Gooden, 364. And an idea about bunting, he bunts it foul. The best average against Gooden in his very brief career has been chalked up by Chili Davis, who has hit Gooden for a 563 average. And the Pirates have two in the top 10 against Gooden. Orsalak at 364, and just ahead of him, fifth on the list, is R.J. Reynolds at 375. And the first curveball topped out to the second base side. Backman over to first, and two men away. So Gooden goes to the curveball and picks up a ground out. And that'll bring up Johnny Ray. Ray, a switch hitter, better hitter from the left hand side of the plate, hitting 323 from both sides. He's had two home runs, 34 RBIs. He is third in the National League in hitting with his 323 average. The leader, Ray Knight at 339, Tony Gwynn at 335, and then Hubie Brooks and Johnny Ray. And the fastball fouled away by Ray. I guess with the cord hanging out of the belt of Johnny Ray you, you could say that you could pull the string on this guy right <laughs> that's to hold him close to first base <laughs> that's for the first base coach right <laughs> that's right <laughs> don't get too far off one ball one strike to Johnny Ray batting 296 against the Mets this year with eight base hits and the fastball fouled into the stands. And it looks like catcher's interference. That's exactly what it was. Catcher's interference. And that's going to be an error on Gary Carter. Carter tipping the batter's bat. Happens with Dwight Gooden sometimes. And Gary, sometimes that happens with a man on. It, you can't explain it readily because the catcher's trying to jump out in front to get a good jump, but Gary, a little careless there. You do have to be careful with a guy like Gooden throwing in a late swinger, a guy who hits the ball the other way like Johnny Ray. And that brings up Sid Bream, hitting 269 with eight home runs, 29 runs batted in. Half of Bream's hits have been extra base hits, and he misses the fastball. Pete Rose has done that about 30 times, Ralph. Now, Dale Barrett was yeah. very good at that. In fact, he set a record one year. A lot of batters do it on purpose. Of course, Rose with that late swing, a guy who hits the ball the other way, those are the guys you really have to be careful about if you're catching. And a one-strike pitch is strike two. Gooden coming back with a fastball and out in front with a two-strike count. I'll tell you, if I were Jim Leyland, I'd go ahead and send Tony Pena here. You're not going to beat Dwight Gooden unless you do something unusual against him. You can't play standard baseball against Gooden and expect to beat him. Ray with only one stolen base. The Pirates have been running a lot this year, but not with any success. They have been successful only 54% of the time in their stolen base attempts. 43 stolen bases out of 79 attempts. Two strikes to count. Ray is short lead at first. He does not go, and the ball is hit in the air to... The third base side, ball in foul territory. Ray Knight is there, and that will retire the side. No runs, no hits, an error on the catcher's interference. One man left at first. And the score at the end of one half inning. 
The Pirates nothing, the Mets coming up. Now here's a word from the good old guys. Center, second baseman Wally Backman batting second. Keith Hernandez over at first base hitting third. Darrell Strawberry in right field is the number four hole hitter tonight. Gary Carter, the catcher, batting fifth. Left fielder George Foster hitting sixth. League's leading hitter Ray Knight batting seventh. Shortstop Rafael Santana hitting eighth. And Dwight Gooden on the mound. So each team with nine hitters tonight, Ralph. And Rick Russell with a record of four and five. An earn run average of 3.08, 27 walks, 36 strikeouts, 78 hits. And he has worked 76 innings. And his first pitch for ball one. Mookie hitting 286. He has two home runs, seven runs batted in, and the sinking fastball grounded to Sid Bream at first. Russell with a good sinker. And you saw it in action right there. The defense, Bream, Ray, Belliard, and Morrison first to third. Reynolds, Bonds, Orsalak left to right. The catcher, Tony Pena. And the batter for the Mets, Wally Backman. Backman hitting 308. He has no home runs, eight runs batted in. Well, he's had some problems with pirate pitching so far this year with a 158 average. Three hits and 19 times up. And Russell Sinker fouled into the stands. Wally Backman, a switch hitter, but much better from the left hand side, which is not his normal way. He is a right handed throwing person and also was a right hand batter as a young player and the ball count now one ball and one strike three for 19 you mentioned a 158 average against Pittsburgh Keith Hernandez on deck and the sinker for ball two two balls one strike Mets lead the league in runs scored with 274. They lead the league in hitting at 267. And the sinker hit on the ground to Johnny Ray. The ball takes a bad hop, stays down, but Ray comes right with it. And two men out. Well, the first two Met hitters have done what you don't want to do against a sinker ball pitcher, especially if you're a left-handed hitter, and that's try to pull the ball. Try to take him the other way. If you pull it, you will play pepper with the right side of the infield all night long. And here is Keith Hernandez hitting at 319, three home runs, 25 RBIs. And Ralph, it makes sense to take him back through the middle or the other way because a right-handed sinker baller has to keep the ball away from left-handers to be effective. Keith with the batting average of 319 that's seventh in the National League he is second in on base average at 409 it's been in a mini slump he was leading an on base percentage Tim Raines has gone by and Raines is at 411 and the first pitch strike one one strike to count and there's one in the alley going over to close that alley up is the left fielder who bottles the ball. R.J. Reynolds can't make the play. And Hernandez is on. Well, we'll see how it's going to be scored. The ball could have been caught and actually should have been caught. Ball hit the heel of the glove of R.J. Reynolds. He kind of circled that ball. He thought it was hit better than it was initially. Watch it hit the heel of the glove. And it's going to be an error on R.J. Reynolds, and you can't really quibble with that. The hitter, Keith Hernandez, wants a hit. <laughs> He's got to be very unhappy. Yeah. <laughs> and but you saw that. Yeah, you sure did. <laughs> you could read lips, you saw it. If you couldn't read lips, you saw it. I think you could learn right there. That would be your first <laughs> sentence. Now it's Daryl Strawberry, and Daryl takes for strike one. Strawberry hitting 279. He has seven home runs, 31 RBIs. Darrell has hit 483 in his last nine ball games. And there's one to left field. Reynolds will take this one, and that'll retire the side. No runs, no hits, one error, and one left in the score. At the end of one, the Pirates nothing, the Mets nothing. Now here's a word from Delta Airlines. No score, the Pirates coming up. 
And it will be R.J. Reynolds to lead off. R.J. hitting 309 for the year with five home runs, 23 RBIs. He is number one in the league in two base hits with 19. And Ralph, the Chicago Cubs split a doubleheader today. The St. Louis Cardinals won the first game one to nothing, and the Cubs won the second game three to two, both games in extra innings. And that's not the only news out of Chicago, is it? Big news in Chicago, of course, you know that Jim Fry was fired by Dallas Green, the general manager of the Cubs. And today he named the stick. Gene Michael has been named the Cubs manager. And Gene was the third base coach for Lou Pinella and the Crosstown Yankees. So Gene Michael moves up and someone I would imagine will be the third base coach for Lou. Well, obviously, you know, they have to have somebody go down there. They can't go a whole season without a third base coach. Right? Not the way they score runs. <laughs> Got to have somebody tell them which way to go when they get there. That's right. Two balls, no strikes. Dwight Gooden on the mound. Struck out one in the first inning. One batter got on base on catcher's interference when his bat was tipped accidentally. And R.J. fouls it away. Not only do do the Yankees have to have a third base coach, but so do the Chicago Cubs because right. Don, Don Zimmer was fired along with Jimmy Fry. There's Tony Pena, the on-deck batter. <coughs> Pittsburgh with a record of two and nine on the road, but really 12 and nine, I should say, but really bad at home. 12 and 21 at home. And that fastball a strike, two balls, two strikes. RJ. If you remember about RJ Reynolds, his first at bat of the year this year, he homered on an 0-2 pitch against Dwight Good. And he didn't get that one. Gooden again with that high fastball, and he picks up his second strike out of the ball game. We used to get about guys with high fastballs. You just get the ladder, and you need one for that pitch. High, high heater. So one away, and Tony Pena, the batter. <laughs> Tony having his problems against Dwight Gooden, hitting 247 against the league, including Dwight Gooden with three home runs and 20 RBIs, but against Dwight. He's had one hit and 20 at bats in his major league career. But he's always exciting. He is exciting, <laughs> especially against Gooden, as he really whips that bat around. And Gooden throws him a curveball. And the fastball at strike two. There's his career record. 0 50 against Dwight, 1 for 20. Two strikes to count to Tony Pena. Pena hitting 208 against the Mets this year. And he goes after the fastball. They've been trying to get Pena to cut down at swinging at bad balls, making contact. He's a fellow that never gets any walks. This year he has been getting some walks as you look at Lee Mazzilli. Penny with 23 walks this year. That's usually a whole season's worth of walks for him. And he takes the fastball, one and two. On deck batter, Jim Morrison. Curveball. Well, to reinforce your point, Ralph, last year in 546 at bat at bats, Tony walked six more times than the walks he has right now, only 29 times. His on base percentage is mighty low. And he takes that fastball, so he has a full count of three and two. Pena, the National League's gold glove catcher. Dwight Gooden. Working here in his 13th game start. Came in with a record of eight and two. And a fastball hit down the right field line. It's a base hit. Strawberry playing over near the line cuts it off. And Pena, who would have been on first base if he had not swung, 
on ball four gets a base hit off of the pitch out of the strike zone. You wonder how somebody can get on top of a fastball when it's 93 miles an hour. Pena didn't even appear to be looking at the ball. How about that swing? When he hit, his head looked like it was not on the ball, but turned toward Dwight Gooden. But you do wonder how in the world he ever got on top of that fastball. Normally, if you make contact on a ball out there as a right-hand batter, you hit a foul ball. Uh-huh. Now it's Jim Morrison. He gets the curve in this ball one. The only way to do it is to drag that bat head through the strike zone, and that's what Tony was forced to do because of the velocity of the pitch. Morrison hitting 240 with nine home runs, 33 RBIs. Hitting 120 against the Mets with three hits and 25 at bats. It does have one home run against the Mets this year. And Gooden behind with a 2 0 count. We've been told that Gooden has been clocked at 95 miles an hour in this ball game. As Tim pointed out earlier, he came out smoking. Stuck and struck out Barry Bonds on a 3-2 fastball his first time up. Then got R.J. Reynolds, a fine hitter, on a fastball. Again to throw to first base. Pena with one stolen base. This is really not a good running situation because you want a guy like Morrison to get a fastball that he can drive. He has nine home runs. He leads the Pirates and Homers with nine. And now good and behind three and all. Morrison checking to see whether or not he will be hitting I'd let him hit here with the pitcher and shortstop coming up behind you got the bottom part of the order I mean why not let him hit and take a shot at pounding one out of here I would guess that he's going to be hitting here and he's not he gets the walk that puts runners at first and second with one one man out and it brings up Raphael Belliard Belliard with an average of 225, has been hitting of late. In his last nine ball games, he's hit 450 to get his average up to 225. He has no home runs and 12 RBIs. So Gooden, who has the best average of fewest walks in a ball game on the Mets and second best in the National League, walks his first man. He has averaged two walks a game, which is second best in the National League. Second to Dennis Eckersley of the Cubs. Gooden also has an average that is best in the National League and second in Major League Baseball of allowing the fewest base runners per nine innings. He has allowed 8.43 on hits and walks. Clemens of the Boston Red Sox is just ahead of him. That stands best in the National League and right here on a base hit and a walk, two men on. And they count two balls, no strikes to Belliard. and no strikes to the eighth place batter. And Davy Johnson going to the chewing tobacco. Got to chew something. You can't just sit there and chew on your tongue. Seven straight balls by Gooden. And a strike call as Gooden gets one in the strike zone. Three balls, one strike. I would imagine Belliard will be taking here Taking for the pitcher due up next, Rick Russell. Of course, he's a good hitter, Rick Russell. Five hits so far this year. And it's ball four, and the bases are loaded. So good now has walked the second batter. And the base is loaded with one man out. Hey, you got to go back some to see Dwight Gooden walk two batters in a row on nine pitches. 
I can't ever remember offhand him ever doing that. It's rare to see him walk two hitters in a row. Let alone two in a game. Yeah. That's his, his average. average. So now Rick Russell coming up. And he's hitting with the bases loaded. Russell with five hits and 27 at bats, hitting 185. He has driven in two runs this year. And he's getting the advice from the third base coach. This Gene Lamont down there, and I guess the only thing that he can be telling him now is make sure the pitch is a strike. But Rick Russell, an excellent hitter. Not have the real body of an athlete, but it's also an excellent be, fielder. That belies good athletic ability. It really does. And a square around the ball gets away from Carter and Carter hurt as he tries to go after it one run scores and the other two runners move up and Carter hurt as he turned to go after that went down to the ground and it, it might be his knee definitely is his knee I think it's his right knee and the Mets could not only ill afford to have Carter go down anybody on this ball club including Dwight Gooden could go down and it wouldn't be considered as serious as the man who just went down or Mets are, Mets are deep in every position but catching Carter had knee surgery this past winter Oh, when he went down he looked hurt part of that Prison. Russell squares around and now that turn right there. Now Russell, Russell going down actually push, pushes him into Gary Carter. Now watch, when Russell goes down, he ends up just like a side block from a pulling guard on an end. It's clipping right there. He appears to be all right, but the Mets fortunate that only one run scored then. It is a wild pitch on Dwight Gooden. Which means it's an earned run. So a run in. The runners move up to second and third behind the runner scoring as Pena came in from third base to score. And the count one ball, no strikes. As the Mets pull Hernandez and Knight in, and they leave the shortstop and second baseman back against Russell. And it's ball two. Two balls, no strikes. And Gooden. Experiencing control problems here in this inning. That's 10 of 11 balls, and if you remember, Tony Pena hit the high fastball to right field for a hit, and R.J. Reynolds to open the inning swung at a ball over his head to strike out. And Russell goes after one that might have been a ball. It was borderline. I hate this word. It's used all the time, overthrowing. Because I don't think there's any such thing as overthrowing, but it appears that Gooden is trying to really throw the ball hard. Yeah, I hate that term, too. I think when people use that term, they mean that the pitcher may be striding too far. And there's one in the strike zone, and it's two and two. What they mean is muscling up. I, I hate that, too, overswinging and overthrowing. It's ridiculous. You're really trying to just muscle up on the ball and try to hit five-run homers. That's what happens when you... When the cliche of overswinging comes about, two and two the count. Struck him out. So good and back on track as he strikes out Russell. And with two men out, the batter will be Barry Bonds. Barry Bonds. And Barry Bonds struck out his first time up on this pitch. A sequence of pitches. So now Bonds batting for the second time. He gets a fastball again as good and threw all fastballs to him the first time up. And he struck out on a 3 2 pitch. So Gooden has been wild and not only wild, but has run a lot of deep counts here in the early going. And that went out of the strike zone. Bonds came into this game hitting 296. He started the season at Hawaii in the Pacific Coast League. 
Now time called as Stoudemire goes out to talk to Gooden along with Carter. See, so you mentioned that term overthrowing. That is an interesting uh, term, and I, as I said, Ralph don't like to use it, but when a pitcher does stride too far, he's actually tr trying to throw too hard, and what happens is arm is pushing the ball, and that's what causes the ball to go, go high. It's the same thing if a hitter strides too far. Usually the hands are under the ball and you hit the lazy fly balls the other way. That's the case. Why don't they call it over striding? Well, they should. Well, that's what you said. <laughs> it's, a right. mis it's a misnomer then. Because you still tried to throw the ball hard. Yeah, there are a lot of misnomers in baseball, though, that have been around for years and years and years. Three balls, no strikes to Barry Bonds, who hit 311 at Hawaii in 44 games this year. And there's ball four, and Gooden now has walked three in this inning. Bases are loaded again, and the batter will be Joe Orsolak, who's very tough to strike out. Right fielder, Joe Orsolak. Gooden has walked only four. That's his high for the year, and he did it in his last outing against the Pittsburgh Pirates. Of course, Gooden is working on his sixth day, and that has been cited as one of the reasons as opposed to his fifth day. That's been cited as one of the reasons that he has experienced more control problems than, than he has in the past two years. Orsolak grounded out on a curveball his first time up. Batting 252 for the year with one home run, 11 runs batted in. That one home run is his first home run in his major league career. It came at Wrigley Field off of Scott Sanderson. And the fastball hot. Morrison at third base, Belliard at second base, and Bonds at first. Two men away, Pirates leading 1-0. We're in the top of the second. And it's ball two. It is ball three, and that one was close. So it's three and zero with nowhere to put him. As Gooden gets in a position of walking four in an inning. Well, the 2-0 pitch was closer, but still high. Now he gets it down. Thing about Orsolak, Orsolak's a contact hitter with a good eye. He rarely swings at a bad pitch. Well, if he was ever going to get a fastball in this spot, it's <laughs> right now. Got that right. And it's right down the middle. So Orsolak hoping to get a walk instead of a base hit takes the three one pitch. And Dwight ought to be stretching here. Otherwise you're going to give Reynolds a chance at first base. There was a situation earlier this year against the Giants when Gooden wound up with the bases loaded three two but he is properly stretching here. Runners will be going with the pitch. They go and Orsolak goes after a borderline pitch and fouls it back in the sands. Probably overswinging this. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely overswinging. <laughs> there are some words they use in baseball. It's just unbelievable. Three and two. Once again, the runners will be going with the pitch. So once again, Gooden from the set position. There's the pitch, and it's popped up in foul territory. Carter over by the dugout. He can go in there, but he can't get it as he tries to hang on to the dugout. And he hits on top of the dugout roof, and he gets a hand for that try. Gary looks like Tom Dooley trying to get this ball. Getting some help from the pirate dugout. That's very nice. They don't have to help him. As a matter of fact, if he catches the ball and they touch him and he drops it, the batter is automatically out. The rule that was brought about when Gene Mock knocked the ball out of the hands of Jerry Grody in Philadelphia quite a few years ago. Now again the pitch, and he walked him. So Gooden walks four in the inning, and the Pirates now lead by a score of two to nothing. And the batter coming up is Johnny Ray. Davy Johnson looking on. 
as Johnny Ray steps in the batter's box Ray was safe on catcher's interference his first time up tipping the glove of Carter now batting with the bases loaded Ray the best hitter on the pirate team and good and goes to the curveball and misses for ball one that's that's good policy even if you miss with that pitch what that breaking ball does it makes you extend and really come down so even by missing with that pitch by throwing the curve maybe you get the fastball back into gear 1 0 pitch a fastball that is in at the knees and the count one ball one strike. Gooden has thrown 40 pitches and we're in the top of the second. And the fastball hit in the air to center field. Mookie right there. And that does it. But two run score on one hit. There were four walks and three men left on base in the score at the end of one and a half innings. The Pirates two, the Mets nothing. Now here's a word from Garcia Vega. Getting some instruction from Mel Stoudemire. And coming in here to lead you along the way. Tim McCarver. All right, Ralph, thanks a lot. And the Mets and Mets fans received a scare in the bottom of, uh, make that the top of the first, top of the second inning when Gary Carter, Rick Russell trying to get out of the way of Gary Carter when Carter was after a wild pitch with the bases loaded and Carter went down. So did Russell. And a breaking ball is inside, 1 0. 2 to nothing, Pittsburgh on top. Gary appears to be all right, doesn't he? Mm hmm. We'll see you when he runs. And it's 2 0. Gary Carter got over swinging. Now you know how I feel about runs well for a catcher. <laughs> and all the other things. That <laughs> all those <laughs> pet peeves. Rip base hit left field. Doesn't have to run well for a catcher when you hit like that. And Carter has been hot. Six home runs, 19 RBIs in his last 24 ball games. And Gary gets a line drive base here. The, the Mets first hit, and he goes down the line without limping, so evidently that knee is okay. And George Foster, the batter. George batting 277. He's tied with Carter for the team lead in home runs with 10. 10 of George's last 22 hits have been home runs. slider George waves at it 0 1 hitting 333 against the Pirates this year one home run he has driven in four against Pittsburgh this year and the fastball inside one and one that home run that George hit off Bob Kipper a two run shot Last Thursday's game at Three Rivers. The Mets beat the Pirates four out of five at Three Rivers last week. Another slider, swing and a miss, one and two. Pena wants the fastball inside. That's where he gets it, but it's low. Two and two to George Foster. So if Russell and Pena have gone according to form, this will be a slider away. Ray Knight, the on deck batter. Slider away, grounded foul. Buddy trying to keep his popularity intact here at Shea. <laughs> Always want to keep those people that close to you happy. <laughs> you don't <laughs> care so much about those people way back That's there. right. <laughs> Fastball outside. So it's three and two. The Mets trail by two. Nobody out. Carter at first. Question is, do you send the runner? I'd keep him there. Okay. Carter not going, and the slider is outside. So Russia walks Foster, and that was a good at bat. That was a quality at bat by George Foster. 
tried to tempt him into going at some bad pitches and Foster held off got the walk now Ray Knight Ray leading the National League in hitting eight home runs 31 RBIs he has already surpassed last year in hits doubles home runs and runs scored there's the leaderboard Ruby Brooks having a fine year. Johnny Ray, of course, the second baseman. And Tony Gwynn always up there. Tony had led the National League in hitting for a long time. Check swing, ground ball. Morrison and Foster into Ray to prevent the throw to first base. So a fielder's choice for Ray Knight and the batter Rafael Santana. Paul Ray didn't want to hit this ball. He tries to hold up. Got just enough of it to tap it down to third. Morrison had a little trouble fielding the ball. No chance for a double play. And now runners at first and third. Ray at first. And Carter at third. And Santana the batter. The Mets have speed in the top of their lineup. They do not have speed in the bottom of their lineup. As a matter of fact, hitters five, six, seven, and eight have no stolen bases. None. First and third, one out. Santana batting 168, and the slider misses. That's called balance. Balance. <laughs> Four speedsters at the top. And That's right. Not five through eight, even though the five through eight hitters have been very, very productive. Fastball inside, two and zero. Oh. Russia was wild in his first outing against the Mets opening day of the season. He walked five and six innings that game while striking out five. He lost that game four to two to Gooden and the Mets. Grounded foul two and one. Carter at third base. Ray Knight at first. One away. Sid Green playing behind Raymond. Russell of course has pitched twice. Now the third time with Gooden on the mound. And when you're the number one pitcher on the staff, you hit up against the number one guy of the other team all the time, or almost all the time. Slider outside, three and one. Russia 14 and eight last year. What a comeback year he had. Tapper toward short. Belliard wanted to come home, but he throws Santana out. So give Santana an RBI. And the Pirates now lead two to one. Knight to second base on the throw. Now batting, number 16, pitcher White. Well, Santana goes after that sinker and chops it out to short. No play anywhere but at first base. And the Mets now have picked up a run. They have not been shut out this year. The only team in the National League not to have been shut out. White Gooden takes a fastball outside. Doc batting 129 on the year. Had his first major league homer against Rick Roden and the Pirates last year. Tried to hold up but couldn't. One and one. Chopper. This is a tough play for Belliard, but he got him. Good play. The ball stayed up for Raphael. But the Mets are on the board. One run on one hit, and they strand one. So after two, it's two to one Pittsburgh, and we'll be back after this word from the Lincoln Mercury dealer. Pittsburgh Pirates join us for all the action live from Shea, beginning Sunday afternoon at one on Channel 9, the home of the Mets. The last banner day that the Mets had against the Pittsburgh Pirates, July 31st, 1983. A day of infamy as far as Steve Zabriskie and I are concerned because we work without the benefit of Mr. Kiner. <laughs> Sorry I wasn't there. You were at the Hall of Fame <laughs> game up in Cooperstown and the Hall of Fame induction ceremonies and you had a great story about being on the tarmac over at LaGuardia. Oh yeah, in the rain. Yeah. yeah. 
not expecting to see the game when you went to Cooperstown, right? Landed in Cooperstown, came out. And you guys were still going on. <laughs> nine nine o'clock that night, that banner double day or double header ended. Two 12 inning games, both won by the Mets. Here's Sid Bream, and he takes a fastball. It's high. White Gooden walked four back in the second inning and gave up two runs. Fastball is tight, 2-0. Oh. That means that Steve and I will leave Sunday after the pregame ceremonies, <laughs> and you're on your own. <laughs> I got it all, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Fastball is low, 3-0 to Sid Bream. You almost saw a no-hitter that day, though. Think of the thrill of that. Yeah, Jose De Leon was the pitcher, eight in the third innings, and then Hubie Brooks got a hit with one out and nobody on. Gosh, that was four years ago. Mets ended up losing 94 games that year. Three years later, they win 98. That was last year. Ball hit well to right field. Deep. This ball is out of here. Home run, Sid Bream. And the Pirates lead it 3-1. to one. comes up with his ninth home run. He had sort of a short swing at this one. Half of his hits have been extra base hits this year, and that's why. Put a good move on that one, hit it out of the ballpark. That's the sixth home run given up by Gooden this year. And for Bream, his ninth of the year at a time with Morrison for the club lead. So there are worse things than walking a hitter. At 3-1 fastball, now the Mets got their run in the bottom of the second. Gary Carter roped a 2-0 fastball to left field to lead off that inning. He eventually scored. That's why you keep talking about, you know, you talk about the overswing and overthrow. Those are overused terms, mm -hmm. certainly. But one term that isn't used enough is to stay ahead. It's 1-0 to R.J. Reynolds. 2-0. When Doubleday invented this game, if he did, that was the first thing he said to his pitcher when he went out to the mound. You got to stay ahead of these guys. Back in 1839, I remember it well. <laughs> Two and one to Reynolds. You were the catcher, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was at that confab. <laughs> Bridey Murphy and I. <laughs> I was tongue in cheek, folks. I do not believe in reincarnation. No letters, please. It's about 25 years ago when Bridie Murphy hit the scene on that life reincarnate, huh? Mm hmm. Reynolds fouls it back. Two and two to RJ. That was Joe Pignatano's great line. He said that when he comes back, Re reincarnation wants to come back as, as his wife, he said. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Because she, she was living so good, he wanted to live that kind of a life. <laughs> Still two and two to Reynolds. <laughs> Peggy played for the Mets in 1962, ended his career like no other player. His last at bat, he hit into a triple play. In 62, right? Mm -hmm. That ended the 62 season That's for right. loss number 120. Reynolds goes down on strikes. That's strikeout number four for Gooden. Well, Gooden working about as hard as he can work. Comes back with a fastball right down the middle, and Reynolds with his bat in his shoulder is called out. So one away, and that'll bring up Tony Pena, who got it all started for the Pirates back in the second when they scored their two runs. Three to one, Pittsburgh on top. The Pirates with two hits, but they've been aided by four walks and a wild pitch. Highly uncharacteristic. <laughs> oh and one. You know, Joe Pignatano did another thing that I have never heard of. I don't think it's ever been done, but you never know about baseball. He hit a home run while batting out a turn. Hmm. 
And they called it on him, and he had to come back and bat in his right place, and he followed that with a home run. Who was, who was the pitcher? Was it the same pitch? Well, I mean... don't get involved. <laughs> Just leave it there. <laughs> oh, and two. Yes, I know a guy on the 4th of July hit a home run that was turned into a single. I do, too. I'm sitting right next to him. <laughs> gets Pena. Tony thought it was high, but he is out of there. Well, the White comes back with this curveball. Has a lot of break on it. Pena doesn't like the call by home plate umpire Cowboy Joe West. Bill Verdon there with Mr. Leland, the manager of the Pirates. Jim Morrison walked and scored a run in the second. You know, there's a great trivia thing about Bill Verdon. Verdon managed the Yankees for two years and never won a game while manager for the Yankees at, at Yankee Stadium. Two bad years, huh? Yeah, never won one game at how Yankee about Stadium. That? And I hear you all saying, how could you do that? Because they played here at Shea Stadium those two years. There's the replay of it, a good pitch, strike two. And two to Morrison. He fouls this one back. Hello, sweet face. She is watching Dwight Gooden struggle. He is behind three to one. We're in the top of the third inning. Gooden has struck out five. He's walked four and allowed one home run in this inning to Sid Bream, his ninth of the year. Jams him with a fastball. Jimmy fights it off. Jimmy Morrison knows what it's like to struggle, doesn't he? He's been a utility ball player almost every year of his life played in a hundred games with the White Sox and had a good year and this year he's going to get a chance to play in a hundred ball games it looks like regular third baseman this year fastball is high one and two and Dwight Gooden's last 56 starts he is 40 and seven with a 1.57 ERA Ball, see you later. So after Bream's home run, Gooden comes back and strikes out the side. But after two and a half, the Pirates lead three to one. We'll go to the middle of the third after this word from RC Cola. Know that tomorrow's game, which is RC Cola Sports Back Day game, that there are no tickets available. That game has been sold out, so there are no tickets available for tomorrow's game. RC Cola bag day that you saw Lenny talk about. However, Ralph, there are some tickets still available for Sunday's Banner Day doubleheader. So Bert. if you want to see the Mets play, you got to wait till Sunday. Mookie Wilson, the batter. Mookie grounded to first, his first time up. Pirates lead it three to one, bottom of three. Ball one. Slider is high, 2 0. The Mets are currently eight games in front of the Montreal Expos, 13 in front of the Phillies, who are in third place. Ball oh, well hit to right center. This ball might be out of here, and it is. Home run, Mookie Wilson. fell behind. <laughs> the 
Well, Mookie Wilson jumps all over this fastball. Sinking right into the heart of the plate. Mookie with the home run picks up his third home run of the year. All three of his home runs have been hit left-handed. Fastball a strike to Wally Backman. It's now a three to two ball game. And a bun and a beauty. And Ray just picks it up. Johnny Ray playing Wally Backman deep. And you got to ask why is that deep, Ralph? Well, his answer might be I didn't think he was going to bunt, but that wouldn't be a good one. <laughs> and it's a perfect bunt. You have to get that bunt by the pitcher and away from the first baseman. Make the second baseman field it, and that's exactly what Backman did. It was a blueprint. Right out of CIA headquarters, that one. Boy, what a good bunt. Here's Keith Hernandez 0 for 1. He was on on an error by R.J. Reynolds, the left fielder, in his first at bat. The chant goes up. Let's go Mets. And they have gone like wildfire against the Pirates. They've won seven of eight. They're two and zero oh here at Shea, and they won five of six at Three Rivers. Ball one, one and zero. Oh. Got a real hit and run situation here, don't you? Sinker ball pitcher, you want to hit that ball on the ground? The big thing is to pick who is going to cover in a situation like this. It'd probably be the second baseman. That's when you'd like to read those signs that they give each other, the shortstop and second baseman. Johnny Ray is the deliverer of the sign, open or closed mouth. And Hernandez takes a strike, one and one. They say, and I don't know whether it's true or not, that Billy Herman, who's in the Hall of Fame of Baseball, one of the great hit and run men, could wait long enough to see who was covering before he would hit the ball. That was an open mouth. It looked like a disguised open mouth. It looked like he knew the camera was on him. The open mouth means you have it, and the closed mouth means me. Mm. Me have it. You don't worry about English. English when you're no, a no. second baseman and a shortstop. Me, me have it. That was an open mouth there, wasn't it? That means that Belliard will be covering. When you're actually when you're ahead of Hernandez as a pitcher, I think it's a good idea to to uh, have the second baseman covering. Very true. He's a protector at that plate. Slider inside, two and two. And if the count's three and one or one and oh or two and oh, then you could have the shortstop cover. A lot well, depends on the count. On the count and then also on the pitch. If it's a breaking ball, then you'd have the shortstop covered. If it's a fastball sinker away, you'd have the second baseman covered. Well, let's see who's covering now. Two and two. That means Belliard's covering. And the slider is inside. And Belliard, sure enough, was getting over there to cover so now the counts three and two and you'll see Backman run Russell's got a good move to first and we'll see who's covering probably belly yard yep open mouth there goes Backman and belly yard was covering but it's a moot point Hernandez walks on the three two pitch second walk issued by Rick Russell and with two on and nobody out, Daryl Strawberry the batter, and he hits Russell well. Strawberry hitting Pittsburgh well, coming into this ballgame, hitting 400 against the Pirates with eight hits, one of them a home run. So we're going to get Ron Schuler out there to talk it over with his veteran pitcher. I'd like to remind you this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the New York Mets and WRTV and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, for other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the New York Mets and WRTV is prohibited. Ron Schuler, the Pittsburgh pitching coach, out to talk to Russell. 
Strawberry hit the ball hard his first time up, but R.J. Reynolds, the left fielder, was there. And Jim Wynn is up and throwing for the Pirates. There's Jimmy. Nobody out. Two on. The Mets trail by a run. Three to two. We're in the third. Slider is high. Merrill hit his first major league home run against the Pirates. And he hit his last one against the Pirates. He grounds this one toward first. Bream will go to second. Good turn by Belliard. And Hernandez doing his job, taking Belliard out of the play as best he could. Well, this ball not hit hard enough to make a double play, so Bream picks up the force play at second base. It was a waste to throw to first. And on the play, Backman moves to third. Here it is again. Hernandez with that forcing slide at second. And the batter, Gary Carter, with Backman at third. Strawberry with good speed at first. One out. Carter single and scored the first run of the game for the Mets in the second. going to score strawberry to second and now he's going to third the throw's going to get him out at third base is daryl strawberry so the game is tied but strawberry thrown out by pena well the axiom is you never make the out at third base with a chance of being the last out of the inning here strawberry thought it was worth the gam gamble even though Pena has that great arm and it was close and strawberry unable to get over the third where he could score it out Morrison makes the tag just as good a piece of it and the breaking ball strike one and one to Gary Carter it's now a three to three ball game Mound must be catching. Maybe it's trichodecophobia. Fear of the number 13. This is Friday the 13th. Fear of throwing a strike. Strike a discophobia. Because that might be it. <laughs> <laughs> Both teams have scored a, a run on wild pitches. Dwight Gooden, four walks in an inning. Russell on the walk. Good play, Belliard, and he guns out Gary Carter. So Rafael Belliard, some fine plays at short, but the Mets tied with two runs on two hits. No errors and none left. So after three, it's three to three. Now here's a word from Burger King. And we're going now to the top of the fourth inning and coming in for the play-by-play -play as you take a look at the stats of Dwight Gooden, a man who has no fear of the number 13, no fear of trichodecophobia. Born on the 13th, Steve Savrisky. Thank you, Ralph. And on top of that, I had my 13th birthday on Friday the 13th. <clears throat> so I guess I, I there's no way I can have any fear of it. 77 pitches for Dwight Gooden. We're going to the top of the fourth. 42 strikes, 35 balls. That is really unusual for him. And you know how concerned Davey Johnson is about the number of pitches Dwight throws in a ball game. So we'll see how long they go with the doctor. A 3-3 tie. Rafael Belliard leading off the top half of the fourth inning, and he takes a fastball for strike one. Gooden has struck out six through the first three, including striking out the side in the third. He has walked four. Allowed the three earned runs on two hits. Strike two. Belliard walked his first time up. And Gooden has struck out four in a row. Well, this is a three-pitch strikeout. And it is a curveball that Belliard swings at futilely. And Dwight on his way to his best strikeout game of the year. Twice he has struck out ten this year in one game. Rick Russell takes a ball low and inside. Russell struck out his first time up back in the second inning. 
Gooden has struck out 10 or more 28 times in his brief major league career. And he now has seven tonight. Sharply hit the short, but it's gobbled up by Santana, and they're two away. And so far, not too many pitches for Dwight in the fourth inning. Now we got a second as Russell goes back. I'd like to pass on our get get well wishes to David Shaw. His wife worked here at the ballpark for years. And I hope I pronounced that correctly. David Stewart, S C H O B E L. And as Barry Bonds hits. We'll wish a happy birthday to Mary Boyle, taking care of our social amenities here in the fourth inning. Happy birthday to a fine Mets fan, Mary. Curveball and a beauty to Bonds, who's batting with two out and nobody on and a strike one. Barry has struck out and walked. And he did some serious hitting while in college at Arizona State. Goes after one in the dirt and it's 0 and 2. And we have one more social note to mention, then we're through for the night. Get well wishes to Karen Costarini, who is the wife of WOR TV salesman Dan. She is at home in a body cast after an accident at home, and we wish her a speedy recovery. So two strikes to count to Barry Bonds. As the crowd gets behind the doctor with two out here in the fourth. Gooden has now struck out five of the last six batters he has faced and a total of eight through the first four innings of work. In the middle of the fourth, it's still three to three, the Mets and the Pirates, and we're back after this for the good olds guys. Diamond View Suite here on the press level. The good folks from 9X being entertained by WOR TV's Peter Mitchell and Pat Janelle enjoying the ball game. 9X, of course, one of our sponsors on TV. George Foster to lead off the bottom of the fourth. Ray Knight and Raphael Santana to follow. 3 3 New York and Pittsburgh. And you could look it up. Ground ball to short. Belliard throws him out, one away. Checking out the National League scoreboard, the Cardinals with a doubleheader with the Cubs, and the Cardinals won the first game in 10 innings, 1 0. And in the second game, it was the Cubs 3 2 in 10 innings. No score, top of the fifth. The Expos playing the Phillies. Reds 2 and Braves 2, bottom of the fourth. Just underway at the Astrodome, the Giants there, and the Dodgers and Padres on the West Coast a little bit later on. Here's Ray Knight, who opened the night as the league's leading hitter at 339. He reached on a fielder's choice his first time up, and he takes a slider for ball one. Ray, Ray didn't. Pardon me. Go I was just going to say, Ray didn't have a good swing his first time up. Ran on into a fielder's choice on a check swing, trying to hold up. And excuse me, ground ball. And that's low and it's ball two and that's been a rarity for him the way he's been going lately. He's had a lot of good swings. Brought a 10 game hitting streak into this game with 16 hits and a 390 average over the 10 games. Two balls no strikes. Right back up the middle. Will it get through. Yes it will. Belliard was there, but the ball stayed down and went under his glove, and it's a base hit for Ray Knight, who's on first with one out here in the fourth. Well, Ray hits in his 11th consecutive ball game with this base hit. He had done that once for previous to this time in this season. Keith Hernandez also had 11 game hitting streak twice this year, longest streaks for the Mets this season. That'll bring up Rafael Santana, who drove in a run in the second inning by grounding to short. It was Santana's seventh RBI of the year. And he lays off the breaking ball for ball one. Mets record for consecutive games with at least one hit held by a fellow we'll see next week. Yubi Brooks, 24. Yubi Doobie. Having another good year. 2-0 to Santana. Russell. Starting to fall behind the Met hitters after being out in front early in the ball game. And now.
now 3-0. Marshall has walked two. He has not struck out a batter so far tonight. And that's right in there, three and one. Some years ago, Ralph, you know, he and his brother looked like they were going to be another Dean combination. When they were with Chicago, they both had outstanding years. Rick, I guess, always the more dominant of the two. Grounded to short with the runner going. There'll be no double play as Davey Johnson puts Ray Knight in motion and Belliard throws out Santana at first. So Knight at second now with two out. Well, the Mets stay out of the double play. Belliard with a routine play with the runner not been going for the double play, but they get only one out and the Mets have a runner in scoring position and Dwight Good in the batter. Doc is 0 for 1. He grounded to short his first time up in the second inning. And he can't hold up on the slider. It's strike one. You know, the Russell br brothers, as you look at Gooden, are the only brothers to combine on a 1 0 shutout in the history of Major League Baseball. They did it against the Dodgers. Rick and Paul Russell. Popped up, drifting out of play. And the count will be 0 and 2. And another big crowd here at Shea. What's your guesstimation, Mr. Kiner? It's got to be over 40. Mets have averaged 34,079 paid admissions for every contest here. Slider outside, 1 and 2. And tomorrow's game is sold out. The Sunday doubleheader should be another big crowd on Banner Day. There are a few seats available for Banner Day. Knight at second with a go-ahead run. And that just missed inside, two and two. Here's a pitch that just did miss. Moving fastball just off the plate. Joe West, the umpire behind home plate. Down to third. Morrison up with it. And the inning is over. One hit and one left for New York here in the fourth. And at the end of four, it's still New York three and Pittsburgh three. Now here's a word from Michelob Light. Top of the fifth inning here at Shea, a 3-3 tie. The Pirates getting two in the second and one in the third. The Mets reversing that with one in the second and two in the third. And a guy who figured... In the second inning scoring, Joe Orsalak to lead it off. He walked with the bases loaded to drive in a run, his 12th RBI of the year. 0 for 1 overall. Orsalak to be followed by Johnny Ray and Sid Bream against Dwight Gooden. Look at 41 that. pitches in the second inning. That was the inning that he walked for. He faced eight batters in that inning. And the Pirates scored two runs. A difference an inning can make, or two innings anyway. And a breaking ball drops in there for strike one to Orsola. Fastball fouled away, and it's 0 and 2. And Dwight has really reversed that pattern in the second inning when he was behind almost every hitter. Then Sid Bream led off the third with a home run. Since then, Dwight has retired six in a row, five of them by a strikeout. That one's out of play as well. It's still 0 2. So he hasn't been falling behind lately. Well, a sign of a great pitcher. They usually have trouble in the first part of the ball game, and as they go along, they get their timing and their rhythm, and they fall right into it. Their mechanics are so good that once they get it, they don't lose it. It's the old saying, get him early or don't get him. Look out. Orsalak takes one on the shoulder. That is the first batter that Dwight Gooden has hit this year. And he does not like that situation because he had him 0-2 when he hit him. Trying to come inside with a high fastball, and Orsalak takes it on the, on the arm. Johnny Ray. Could be 
black and blue for weeks. That's yeah, one thing. <laughs> you take a breaking ball or something, but you take Gooden's heat flush, and you're going to have a mark. Johnny Ray, been in a slump lately, is 0 for 2 tonight. He reached on catcher's interference in the first inning. And he flied out to center field his second time up. And he hits a slow looper to second base, but Santana turns it into a double play. Backman got rid of the ball in a hurry, and Santana came across the bag to complete it. Well, Santana does a good job of getting away from the sliding runner who illegally made the slide there. You've got to touch the bag when you go into that shortstop. He didn't get close to it. They can call an automatic double play. Say, when you see the all-new Nissan Sentra Sports Coupe, you'll say, bye-bye, basics. Hello, Sentra. So two out and nobody on for Sid Bream. Who hit a long home run to right center after popping out in foul territory to third baseman Ray Knight to end the first inning. And a fastball on the corner for strike one. Bream now with nine home runs and 30 RBI. Back off Gary Carter, 0 and 2. Been a tough night already for the kid. Marshall right. fell into him earlier and turned his knee, and now this ball comes up and gets him right under the mask, probably on the chin. I just swallow your Adam's apple there, man. 0-2 oh to Bream. Two out, nobody on. See you later. Bream doesn't like it, but it's strikeout number nine for the doctor. Gooden has retired nine in a row, and Bream and home plate umpire Joe West still having words. But the argument now apparently over, at least for the moment. Still 3-3, three to three, Pittsburgh and New York. Now here's a word from Nissan. Wilson coming up and Coogan's bluff Steve overlooking the old site of the polo grounds very famous here in New York I don't think this is the same one though this has to do with a guy named Coogan Bluffing who, who bluffs somebody but it's a nice it play on the words <laughs> ruin a good story <laughs> it's a nice play on words because it takes place in New York and Mookie Wilson gets a fastball for his first pitch after he hit a home run back in the third He's raised his average from 118. That goes back to May 17th to 290. Third home run of the year, and now he hits a hard ground ball to Johnny Ray at second base. And Mookie one for three in the night. Hey, fans, a great way to reward yourself after the game, win or lose, is with a clean, crisp taste of Beechwood Aids Budweiser. Yeah, this Bud's for you. Here's Wally Backman. Backman beat out a bunt for a base hit back in the third inning. That's got it tied up when they scored two in the third. Mookie scoring on the home run and Backman later on scoring on a wild pitch. And Russell in the dirt with a sinking fastball. It's ball one. Should have known you'd know the plot to all those old movies. I love old movies. Fastball fouled away. That one's not real old, though. I'll tell you my favorite movies. They were made, not every movie made in this period of time, but most of them were made between 1937 and 1948. I think some of the greatest movies of all time were made in that decade plus there. Ground ball up the middle and a base hit. So Backman with his second hit of this ball game. And it brings up Keith Hernandez. 
Here's the American League scoreboard. No score. Yankees at Baltimore, bottom of the third. In the top of the fourth, Detroit is leading Toronto 7-4. To top of the fifth, Boston leads Milwaukee 3-1. to one. Also top of the fifth, Cleveland shutting out Minnesota 8 to nothing. And later on, it'll be Kansas City at California, Texas at Oakland, and Chicago at Seattle. Right here, it's tied up at three. The Mets with a runner at first and one out. We're in the bottom half of the fifth inning, and Keith Hernandez the better. Keith walked his last time up. His 0 for 1 in this game against Russell. Run back when the threat to run draws the throw. Mets have been successful in 75% of their stolen base attempts. Good percentage. And again, Backman gets the attention of Rick Russell. Backman with four stolen bases this year. Tough to steal on Tony Pena. He has thrown out 46% of the runners attempting to steal. That is extremely high. So you got a tough man right here in Pena. Pena has two things going for him that make him tough. He's quick as a cat and he has a great arm. And Keith takes again. Keith is second in on base average. Getting on base with either a base hit or a walk. This ball hit to deep right center field. It's way back. Going back is Bonds, and it is gone goodbye. A two-run home run by Keith Hernandez, and the Mets lead 5-3. to three. They want Keith to come out and take a curtain call, which he will do. For Hernandez, his fourth home run of the year. He now has 27 RBIs. Bonds gives it an excellent effort here. He's too late, however, to have any chance to get the ball. Now Darryl Strawberry, and he gets a slider for ball one. Here's Bonds going after the ball. He really can't outrun this ball, and when he makes this last-minute adjustment, he has no chance. And now Strawberry... Getting his next delivery as Bonds comes down. Hernandez talking it over with Wally Backman. And the fastball. I guess that was Bob Ojeda. Bob pitching in a sunny doubleheader. Off speed pitch. Strawberry looks and he's gone. First strikeout in the game by Rick Russell. And Darrell did not like this call at all. He thought this ball was low and away. And it looked like it did break over the plate. It's not where it's caught, it's where it goes through the strike zone. And it looked like it might have been in there. And I'll bring up Gary Carter. Carter one for two tonight. Single and scored in the second. Ran it out in the third inning. Belliard had to make a good play on him to throw him out in the third. Really did take a base hit away from him. That's leading five to three. Two men away, bottom of the fifth inning. And Russell misses with the off-speed pitch. Two balls, no strikes. With that home run by Hernandez, the second home run for the Mets tonight, New York has now hit 22 homers in their last 18 games. And a slider for ball three, three at all. That was the sixth home run given up by Russell this year. Doesn't give up too many. Sinker ball pitcher. Three and one. Looks like Carter was taking all the way there, and that would be a little bit surprising. And that's when Rip foul. That puts the count at three balls and two strikes. 
Gary's had six RBIs in the last two ball games. Drove in four Tuesday night and two Wednesday night. On June the 10th, Carter was hitting exactly the same as he was on June the 10th a year ago. 230. He had eight home runs compared to five the year before. And a good slider there gets him, and that'll do it. But the Mets score two runs on a base hit by Backman, a home run by Hernandez. They leave none in the score at the end of five. The Mets five and the Pirates three. Right now, here's a word from Budweiser. A score of five to three. Reynolds has struck out twice against Gooden. Now, he had been one of the top five hitters against Gooden in his career, hitting 375 against White until tonight. And the first pitch by Gooden, the ball. And the ball has been rare lately. Check that out. The only ball he threw of the last 15, the one that hit Orsola. Now he has thrown two since that stat was put on the board. The only ball he threw hit Orsola, right? Right. And this ball hit in the air to center field. Mookie back to the track. And one away. Here's Tony Pena's last at bat in the third inning against Dwight Gooden. He goes after the high heater and takes his patented big swing. Gets another fastball in almost the same place and misses it. And the bender is bye bye time. And now Pena batting for the third time before he struck out in that sequence of three pitches. He singled off a 3 2 pitch back in the second. That started a three run rally, make that a two run rally for the Pirates. After the single, Gooden walked four batters. Wild pitch one in, the other was forced in on a walk. That's a, how the Pirates got their two runs in the second. They got their other run on a home run by Sid Bream in the third. One strike to count to the free swinging Tony Pena and the curveball strike two. And we were talking about Dwight Gooden's pitches and his being behind and walking batters early in the game but not lately and Jay Horwitz informed us that was the first time in his career that Dwight had walked four batters in one inning. Most he's ever walked in a game seven. And Pena breaks his back on the curveball. And that is strikeout number 10, the third time that Gooden has struck out 10 this year. Well, this ball close to being in the strike zone, but probably would have been called a ball. Pena does not get cheated. Boy, he gets a cut. He's so far out in front, however, and fooled that he, you're right, he almost hurt himself. You wonder that why he hasn't hurt him. In fact, he has hurt himself this year. He pulled rib muscles swinging the bat. Now Morrison gets a curve for ball one. Pena, it, it, some of his parts were leaving on that, <laughs> on that swing. <laughs> Looked like a cartoon character where all the arms and legs came off for a second. <laughs> that is the... 29th time that Gooden has struck out 10 in a ball game or more. His all-time high 16. He did that his rookie year, and he did it twice. And he is the only pitcher in the National League to strike out 16 batters, as many as 16 batters, and not walk a batter. One of the most amazing stats of all, Roger Clemens, who pitched that 20-game strikeout game earlier this year, did not walk a batter in striking out 20. One and two to count to Morrison, who has walked and struck out. Morrison was left looking at a curve his last time up. And you know what's interesting about tonight, Ralph, too, is the fact that Dwight just did an interview for one of the New York papers talking about how he was going to de-emphasize striking people out and save his arm. And here he goes out, strikes out 10. He's thrown a ton of pitches again tonight. And he goes to the curve, and it's strike three, strikeout number 11, a one, two, three inning. And the score at the end of five and a half innings, the New York Mets five, the Pittsburgh Pirates three. Now here's a word from the good old guy. In the Mets leading by a score of five to three. Since the home run by Sid Bream, 
Dwight Gooden has struck out eight of the 12 batters he faced after the home run. Green made him mad. And it's George Foster, the leadoff for the Mets in the bottom half of the sixth. George has walked and grounded out. Russell has given up five runs on six hits. And that's ball one. Russell came into the game with a record of four and five. And two of his losses to Dwight Gooden. And this one grounded down the line. It's foul. George receiving his player of the week honor before the game as you look at Larry McWilliams who's been relegated now to the pirate bullpen warming up. One ball one strike and the slider foul back on a check swing. <laughs> Talk about the knot hole gang. Huh? Wouldn't have to lose a little weight. <laughs> the chain link gang instead of the knot hole gang. One ball, two strikes. And the slider hit in the hole. Belliard has done a good job at shortstop. He does another good job on that one. So Foster grounds out. Well, Sammy Khalifa was expected to be the shortstop for the Pirates, but Khalifa has been unable to do the job because he just doesn't provide enough offense. Belliard was supposed to be the backup middle infielder and has also played third base for the Bucks. But since his hitting has come on of late and his feeling has been outstanding, he looks like he's got the job right now. And here's Ray Knight, who leads the National League in hitting. Ray in this game, one for two. He takes the sinking fastball for ball one. Ray now has hit in 11 straight games. And he has five more hits already this year than he had all of last season. He's had more hits, more home runs more of everything this year than he had all season long last year. Last year he had six home runs this year he has eight. Good slider there in the count one and two. And Ray deserves to be in the all star game and the reason he's not on the all star ballot is because the ballots are printed up before the season begins. And this year they changed the ballots a little bit and they have a representative from each team at each position. And so the people who printed the ballots sort of figured based on last year that Howard Johnson would be the Mets regular third baseman and so Hojo's on the ballot and not Ray. And Ray holds up on the breaking ball two and two. So if he's going to be voted into the All-Star game it has to be by a write in vote and that's not easy. And I think that the the only way he's going to make it Ralph is to be selected by Whitey Herzog which is going to be tough as Ray pointed out in the pregame interview because the Mets will have at least four other guys on the team. And the fastball fouled away. That stays at two and two. Strawberry leads all the people in voting at this point. Keith Hernandez is number one at first base. Of course, right. the pitchers are, are picked by the manager. And you know Dwight Gooden's going to be selected. He'll be on the team. Gary Carter's leading at the catching position. There's one looped out to first base, and Knight is out. So two men away. Mets leading 5-3. Sure. And Russell probably working his last half inning because he's due to bat when Pittsburgh comes up in the seventh. Now the batter will be Rafael Santana. Raphael has grounded out to the short shot shortstop the two times he has been up. But just to finish the thought on Ray Knight in the All Star game if he gets enough right in votes it'll make it tougher for Herzog not to take it. And that's why here at Shea Stadium the public address announcer and Diamond Vision have been suggesting that people do that. And that one out of the strike zone two balls no strikes. Santana got a run batted in when he grounded out back in the second inning scoring Carter for the Mets first run and he grounds that ball foul so it's two and one Raphael with his seventh RBI of the year Another one grounded foul. Two balls, two strikes. Did you enjoy going to the All-Star game when you were playing, Ralph? 
or would you have rather had the days I, off? I didn't enjoy going or coming back, but when I was there, I loved it. <laughs> There's a high pop up. Coming up in the ball, the left fielder, R.J. Reynolds, and he puts it away. You got to remember, we won in trains in those days. Yeah, no jets. So the score at the end of six innings here at Shea, it's the New York Mets five, the Pittsburgh Pirates three. Now here's a word from Michelob Light. <laughs> two and two to Bonds. Fastball high. So it's three and two. Should Bonds get on, then you have rabbits on the bases. And the Pirates trailing by two. So you have to be alive for the stolen base or the double stolen base threat. Three and two to Barry Bonds. One out. Breaking ball is outside. So Bonds is on base. His second walk and the fifth walk issued by Dwight Gooden and the batter Joe Orsalak. I don't know how you feel about it, Timmy, but I'm surprised they threw a breaking call to him there because so far tonight he has not been able to handle Gooden's fastball. Struck out on three fastballs in the first inning after three balls were thrown, a 3-2 fastball, six straight fastballs, and then after setting him up with the two curveballs in the fourth inning, he blew a fastball by him. But I'm inclined to agree with you. I'm more than inclined. I agree with you. Why, why dog paddle, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, he does have home run power. He is the tying run. But I would go ahead and challenge him because he's yet to prove he could handle it. But it didn't happen that way. Barcelac is 0 for 1. He walked in the second. He was hit by a pitch in the fifth, and he's grounded the second. Curveball outside. Pitcher usually doesn't have as good a curveball when he's working from the stretch as when he's working from the windup. He doesn't have that high kick to drive off the rubber like he does when he's winding up. Good fastball right here and Orslak swinging late. But your point's well taken Tim about not being able to push off because when Gooden has missed recently from the stretch he's been high and away to the left handed hitters. The 3 2 pitch to Bonds and the first pitch to Orslak both breaking balls high and away. Gooden has struck out 12 he's walked five. He leads five to three. Trying for victory number nine. Fastball foul back. One and two to Orsalak. Well, the Phillies have taken a one nothing lead over the Montreal Expos. That game in the ninth inning now. Floyd Yeomans against Shane Raleigh and Ralph Kiner will have all the final scores and games in progress in both leagues on Kiner's corner immediately following this game. Fly ball left field. There's George Foster. It's a fair ball and Foster makes the catch. So there are two out and the batter Johnny Ray. Steve, I paid note to your comment about, in particular, Marty Noble's column today in Newsday. Marty, the fine writer for Newsday and travels with the ball club. And Dwight had told Marty that he was trying to get the ball down and throw more ground balls. Tonight he has thrown three ground balls, one of which was turned into a double play. <laughs> <laughs> and of struck the out 12. Of the 22 outs recorded, four have been recorded on three ground balls. One, of course, the double play. And the breaking ball is high. It could have something to do, as you and Ralph mentioned earlier, Tim, with this being his sixth day instead of his fifth day, and he could be just a little bit stronger than normal. 
He has been working a lot of games on the sixth day this year, especially early in the season with the off days and rainouts. But it really, when it comes right down to it, and he said this in the interview with Marty Noble, it's not the K's that are important, it's the W's. That's true. But Dwight Gooden, on the other hand, is more effective up in the strike zone rather than down. One and two. Of course, if he develops the ability to adapt and the adaptability to be able to pitch in different fashions against different teams, it's all over. Wouldn't be fair, no. would it? No, I agree. Forget it. One and two to Johnny Ray. He fouls it back. Johnny, the toughest hitter in the National League to strike out last year. Belliard returning to second. Barry Bonds to first. There are two out. We're in the seventh. The Mets up by two. Johnny Ray, probably one of the most underrated infielders in the National League. He's overlooked because of the city in which he plays. He doesn't get a lot of publicity. He's also not made an error in the field in the last 38 games, and he rarely does make errors. He's just solid in every department. The record for that, Manny Trio back in 82, went 89 games without an error. 89 games, a record for second baseman. That's more than half a season. And second baseman handled the ball a lot. One and two to Ray. Fouls off another one. This is another thing that contributes to Dwight throwing a lot of pitches. Is that he does cause a lot of hitters to foul balls off the other way. And that doesn't usually show up anywhere. Except in the charts that are kept in the dugout. Except in your arm when you're about 32. <laughs> also, even when you're 21 on the day after you pitch. <laughs> Dwight appears much more fidgety on the mound tonight, does he not? He does. Got him with the breaking ball. Johnny Ray goes down on strikes. That is strikeout number 13 for Dwight Gooden. No runs, a hit, and two left for the Bucks in the eighth. And after six and a half, five to three, New York. And we'll be back after this word from Bartles and James. Kids 14 and under will receive a Mets replica jersey, courtesy of Cons Meats, just like this one here. Due to the heavy demand of Sunday, June 22nd, Cons Meats Kids Jersey Day tickets are still available at Shea Stadium's advanced ticket window only. For all other games, tickets can be purchased at all Ticketron outlets at Shea Stadium's advanced ticket window or call 718-507-TIXX for more ticket information. So come on out and see the Mets take on the Chicago Cubs. And remember that all kids 14 and under will receive a Mets jersey courtesy of Cons Meats. Absolutely free. And also the Mets continue this four-game weekend series against the Pittsburgh Pirates tomorrow as it is R.C. Cola Sports Bag Day and a doubleheader on Banner Day, Sunday, June 15th. Remember, tomorrow's game is sold out, but not so the Sunday doubleheader. After Pittsburgh, Ryan Sandberg, Rick Sutcliffe, and the rest of the Cubs will make their first appearance of the season here at Shea for a four-game series, June 19, 20, and 21. And concluding on Cons Meat Day, Meat, Cons Meat Kids Jersey Day. There we go. Sunday, June 22nd. And due to the heavy demand on Saturday, June 14th, a reminder that RC Cola Sports Bag Day and Sunday, June 22nd, Cons Meets Kids Jersey Day are both sold out, but there are still tickets available for Sunday, and the Pirates have a new pitcher. Larry McWilliams, as we mentioned earlier, recently relegated to the bullpen after ineffectiveness as a starter, his 12th appearance. One and four with a 5.72 ERA. And Dwight Gooden swings and misses. Lee Mazzilli will stay in the game and play left field. So R.J. Reynolds moves over to right field. 
and Joe Orsalak out of the game. So if you're keeping score at home, you can put in ink Larry McWilliams in that number two spot. And Gooden bounces one towards second. Easy play for Ray. And there's one away. Five to three. Mets on top. Bottom of the seventh with one out and nobody on. And the batter will be Mookie Wilson. Rick Russell threw 88 pitches in his six innings of work, 46 of them strikes. He struck out only two batters. He walked only two, and he is charged with five earned runs on a total of six base hits. He did throw also a wild pitch and gave up two home runs. Mookie hit his third home run of the year, all left-handed. Back in the third inning, he's one for three. High chopper to Belliard. That is the seventh assist for Rafael Belliard in the ball game. Two out, nobody on, and the batter Wally Backman. Second base, Wally Backman. Randy Neiman and Doug Sisk just up getting their throwing in in the bullpen, one would assume. Gooden with early problems tonight. He gave up two in the second, one in the third, but he's been sparkling since then. Strike one. Backman two for three with two runs scored. Good breaking ball, 0 and 2 to Wally Backman. Another grounder toward Belliard and his eighth assist of the night. As the Mets go in order, that is eight Mets that have gone down in succession since Hernandez' home run in the fifth inning. But the Mets lead it five to three after seven, and we'll be back right after this word from Manufacturers Hanover. <laughs> it's either Halloween or it's Friday the 13th. It is Friday the 13th. Indeed it is. But you wouldn't know it by the score as far as the Mets fans are concerned. It's 5-3 to three New York, top of the eighth, and Sid Bream pops up the first pitch. Wally Backman at second base makes the catch, and on one pitch, there's one away. Dwight has struck out 13 tonight through the first seven and a third, and that ties the high in the National League this season. Eric Shaw of San Diego struck out 13 Giants in a 10-inning game back on April 26th. And the batter, R.J. Reynolds. Steve, we mentioned that Montreal score. Montreal has tied it now against Philadelphia in the ninth inning. And the reason we mentioned that was because Floyd Yeomans is starting tonight against the Phillies in Philadelphia. Reynolds takes outside for a ball. And Gooden, of course, starting. And that means the matchup in Montreal next Wednesday night. It'll be Floyd Yeomans and Dwight Gooden. And they went to school together at Hillsborough High. Yeomans left after the first two years and went to California to finish his high school education. How so about that, though? Be the first time they've ever faced each other. Uh-huh. One and one to R.J. Reynolds. Reynolds has struck out a couple of times and flown to center. Check swing, and it's a foul ball. Reynolds didn't see that ball. Carter wanted some call by Joe West, but Reynolds shrewdly stayed in the box. A lot of check swings against Dwight tonight. This one looked like it hit right in back of home plate. And then Reynolds is trying to do two things. Stay out of the way of the ball and sort of get in Gary, Gary Carter's way at the same time. Like in hopscotch, go back, you forgot your toy, huh? <laughs> he was hopping all right. Those Gooden's fastballs, one and two to R.J. Reynolds.
Ground ball to third through the legs of Ray Knight for only a second error of the year. Well, this ball surprises everybody. I don't know how Reynolds hit that ball. It was breaking down. Knight comes over in front of it, and he didn't stay down, but the ball did. And it went right through the wickets, but this ain't croquet. Only the second error, though, that Knight has made all year, as you said, Tim. He's played an outstanding third base. So Reynolds at first base. There's one away. Two-run met lead in the batter, Tony Pena. Pena now two for 23 against Gooden. He's one for three tonight and scored a run back in the second. 0-1. Tony swings and the way the doctor throws that fastball if the bat and ball ever do collide you wonder what's going to happen probably go to right field <laughs> <laughs> got to really gear it up to pull Dwight good and pain you by nature not a pull hitter anyway but if he ever extends those arms that would be interesting Tony very strong for his size only weighs 175 pounds five ten and a half. his mind there as Ray Knight was deep Ray on the line and I think Ray looking for the exception here rather than the rule of course I guess you have to protect against the breaking ball Belliard pulled the ball down the line Ray probably thinking about that Rafael did it back to open the seventh inning the last inning one advantage that the middle infielders have that the first and third basemen do not have is that they can see the side. They can anticipate more so than the first and third basemen because they can tell which pitch is going to be thrown. And of course, the hitter's chance of pulling a breaking ball much better than a fastball, especially against Gooden. A lot of times the shortstop will have a signal with the third baseman on the breaking ball, and the second baseman the same with the first baseman. The problem is you can't move off in the line and back across with each pitch. That's true. Fly ball to right field as Strawberry's in. And he makes the catch. So there are two out here in the eighth inning and Jim Morrison the batter. Remember he has nine home runs on the year. Well you talked about it Tim going to right field. Here's Tony Pena's swing and as you can tell from the way he made contact that's the only place that ball was going to go. But boy, he does not get cheated up there. He takes a full cut. And so does Jim Morrison. Jim, as we said, with nine home runs, he's now tied with Sid Bream for the team lead in that department. Jim has struck out a couple of times. He walked and scored a run in the second. Five to three, Mets on top. Oh, Reynolds was leaning there. running in the fastball for a strike. Gooden has struck out 13. He has struck out at least one in every inning but this one. This is the eighth. And a pitch out. It's one and one to Jim Morrison. Reynolds fake going then. He writes a lot better at holding runners on than he was when he first came up, but he still, with that big leg kick and the long motion, is fairly easy to run against. Man, that was close. That certainly was. Reynolds just back. Reynolds choosing to go back in standing up and he just did get on the bag before Hernandez tagged him on the cap. Swing and a miss. Mara 
Harrison trying to tie it up with that swing. And he can hit a fastball. He can hit a high fastball a long way. His last at bat, he has struck out twice in this ball game, and, the, and both times looking. His last at bat, though, he really battled Dwight and fouled off a number of good fastballs before finally being called out. Crowd wants a strikeout. Gooden wants an out. That's an idea of how if Morrison can get around on that high fastball and pull it foul like that, it shows you how quick his hands are. That's a pitch that usually, usually just ties right-handed hitters up mm -hmm. because you just can't get the bat head out there quick enough to make good contact. Carson looks like he's a Charlie Lau disciple up there. Reynolds doing his job, diverting Gooden's attention, hoping that Dwight will worry so much about him that he forgets the hitter. Carter, on the other hand, reminding Dwight to pay attention. Ground ball toward third. Ray Knight over to Backman. For the Pirates here in the eighth inning, no runs, no hits, one error and one left. And after seven and a half, it's five to three New York. We'll be back after this word from Budweiser. We'd have one tonight. Tonight's edition of the incredibly stupid stat. Through seven innings, Bud Harrelson has kicked the third base bag 31 times. That includes the eighth. There's Bud. All right. Here's, here's video proof. <laughs> this is the last time. That's twice. One, two. <laughs> <laughs> and here's Steve <laughs> kicking around. Yeah, let's kick around this last inning and a half or so. Mets are hoping it's only one inning as we're in the bottom of the eighth. And the Mets lead it five to three. Keith Hernandez to lead it off. Looked at strike one from Larry McWilliams. Then a ground ball to first. Bream will take it himself. And there's one out really becoming sophisticated with those silly stats we now have video with it's pretty good well you know Artie Friedman he's a, he's a real careful and exact statistician and when he can get something like that to back it up that's you know Artie's style if you, if you had buddy kick in the bag all of those times I guess you'd call it constant replay <laughs> <laughs> 31 times <laughs> Strawberry drills one into the right center field gap. It will not be caught. Cut off by R.J. Reynolds, and Strawberry will ease in at second base with a one-out double. Hanging curveball and that great extension by Strawberry, his 11th double of the year, and interestingly fielded by... The player who leads the National League in doubles, R.J. Reynolds. And Cecilio Guante now throwing for Pittsburgh. First hit off Larry McWilliams, and here's Gary Carter, who has singled and scored a run in three trips. And he's going to be walked intentionally. With first base open and George Foster on deck. And the one thing this walk intentionally gives Jim Leland, the pirate manager, is a chance to get Cecilio Guante warm. He'll probably have Pena go out to talk to McWilliams. And then he'll bring in Guante. So Carter will go to first. We'll see if he mo moves his hands back and forth. That's usually an indication he wants the catcher to go out and talk to the pitcher. And he may wait now until Foster. Nope, Pena's going out right now. I thought he might wait until Foster came up to the plate since George takes time himself. But you can see Pena's got one eye on the dugout. <laughs> Jim Leland standing to the right of Bill Verdon, who has the towel around his neck. And now here comes Jim. So you were on the money, Mr. McCarver, as usual. You know, probably whenever you see a manager go right to the umpire, if you're the, at the ballpark, he's going for one reason. He wants to make a double switch. Jim Morrison appears to be leaving the game. 
And Bill Amon will go in the game. And Bill Amon will hit ninth. And the new pitcher, Cecilio Guante, will be in the seven hole. And we'll be back after this word from Express Mail. Second in the order, and the new pitcher is Cecilio Guante. And there are the numbers on Cecilio. Opposing hitters batting only 187 against Guante. They're 29 for 155. Has a couple of saves. Big sweeping slider and a fastball inside a Taylor into right handed hitters. So you the third pitcher of the night for the Bucks. Pardon me, Ken. McWilliams Sorry. only pitched one and one third innings. Gave up one hit. Walked one intentionally and he's obviously responsible for the two base runners out there. So George Foster will face Guante. George 0 for 2 plus a walk is grounded to short twice. Osco now warming for the Mets so should a pinch hitter be needed Davey Johnson may go to a pinch hitter goodness thrown a ton of pitches tonight most of them coming in the first part of the ball game Foster's with a swing and a miss and it's 0 and 1. George has driven in 16 runs in the last actually 17 runs in the last 16 games. Strawberry at second and Carter at first. One and one. One out. Five to three. New York leading here in the bottom of the eighth inning. going to third there's a throw from Pena not in time and Tony made an excellent throw he just fired a seed down to third base but Strawberry had such a tremendous jump that he was safe he was in there it appeared that's a good base running play Strawberry thrown out earlier in the game on that wild pitch and most young players would be reluctant to go to third again but that's a good base running play with one out. Carter stays at first and a fly ball into short right field Reynolds coming hard can't get there but it's foul. <laughs> Strawberry probably would have been able to tag and score had Reynolds caught the ball even though it was shallow because RJ was running hard toward the seats and would have had to do a lot before he ever even got rid of the ball. That is a point well taken and for that reason Strawberry was tagged. Carter was all the way to third base so he goes back to first. And the count two and two to Foster. In that event had Reynolds caught the ball he would have gone to first to double up Carter. <laughs> <laughs> what a bit his only play right. Three and two now. So with one out will Carter be running from first and if he, if he will or if he does will Pena you look strawberry back at third Carter not running and Foster strikes out the slider gets him for the second out of the inning. Well that was a good slider right there. Now here's Ray Knight with two out runners at first and third Knight is one for three reached on a fielder's choice single to center in the fourth inning and lined out to first base and Bream now is not going to hold Carter on with two out. He'll play behind him after he does a little housekeeping. Ray now has hit an 11 straight games. He had hit 390 in the previous 10 games of that hitting streak. And he's hit in 34 of the last 38 games. 
fouled off and the count one and one. And there's Rick Roden. Lounging. Mets will miss Roden in this series. Tomorrow afternoon's game, Mike Bilecki against Sid Fernandez, and then Bob Kipper and Bob Walk against Bob Ojeda and Rick Aguilera. Three Bobs going on Sunday. It's not only Banner Day, it's Bob Day. They'll be bobbing those banners up and down, too, won't they? <laughs> One and two as Knight takes a strike. Yes, we will be covering Banner Day between games of the doubleheader. All right. Tight again, and it's two and two. Tight tonight. Rafael Santana on deck. Jim Leland seeing who's left. Foul back, and the count remains two and two. Two out, two on. And a two run New York lead. Carter will be running from first. This ball misses by a pretty good margin. It's about four or five inches outside. Carter off. Knight checks. Ball four. So the bases are loaded with two out. And Rafael Santana will be the hitter. And if you're wondering why Davey Johnson is not pinch hitting for Rafael Santana, it's because you keep your defense strong in the late innings when you have a lead. And Rafael Santana, the best shortstop by far that the Mets have. So that's why he's hitting for himself here in this bases loaded two out situation and he takes a strike going one there is Danny Heap who will be the pinch hitter should Santana continue the inning as Dwight Gooden is scheduled up next one and one and El Gato had to pounce out there to get that one. Well the Phillies beat the Montreal Expos two to one. Shane Raleigh the winner and we believe that Floyd Yeomans was the losing pitcher. That pitch caught the corner and it's one ball two strikes. So the Mets with a victory tonight would bring their lead in the National League East back to nine games over the Expos and keep it at 13 over Philadelphia. So the Mets got what they wanted in Philadelphia tonight. Right. Now Guante and Pena having a problem so they're going to speak about it in Espanol. Pat Clements a left hander warming up and, and kind of a little review of tonight as Gene Michael the third base coach of the New York Yankees was named the manager of the Chicago Cubs the Cubs and Cardinals split today two extra inning games at Wrigley Field but more importantly Gene Michael the new manager in case you haven't heard. Strike three ends the inning. The Mets fail to score and leave the bases loaded as Guante comes in and strikes out two to end it. But it's still five to three New York and we'll go to the ninth inning after this for your four dealers. Patty LaBelle, Julian Lennon and Billy Ocean are just a few of today's hottest musicians scheduled to appear on the 1986 Montreux Golden Rose Rock Festival. Don't miss this two-hour international rock extravaganza Saturday night at 11.30. 
Glenn Dykstra into the game to play center field defensively. He will bat ninth and lead off the bottom of the ninth if there is such. Mookie Wilson moves from center field to left field. And Jesse Orozco into the game looking for his 12th save of the year and replace of Dwight Good. And this is the seventh straight appearance for Jesse Orozco, not only in relief, I don't mean that, but he appeared in all three games in Pittsburgh, starting with the second game of the doubleheader last Friday night. He appeared Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday against the Phillies. And the difference really now is that, that the Mets had an off day yesterday and gave Jesse a little breather. And he'll be facing Raphael Belliard to be followed by Lee Mazzilli and Barry Bonds. Fastball for strike one. Belliard tonight, one for two, as you see. He's also walked and stole a base. Fouled away in the count 0 and 2. Jesse Orozco has been scored upon in only four of his 24 outings this year. And he is third currently in the National League with his 11 saves. The leader, Dave Smith of Houston, has 16. Breaking ball high and away. One ball, two strikes. 143 Man. pitches. Remember, he had 41 pitches back in the second inning, so that stat is not as alarming since he had all those pitches back in the second. 41 pitches when he walked four back in the second. So for the other seven innings he worked, he only threw 102 pitches, and uh -huh. that's not really that far out of line for him. Mm -hmm. Not with all the strikeouts. Right. He struck out 13 in eight innings. And Bill Webb reminds us that it's Friday the 13th. How appropriate. A little number into right center field. Dykstra won't be able to get to it. And Belliard leads off the ninth inning with a base hit off Jesse Orozco, his second hit of the night. And here's Lee Mazzilli. Mazzilli now will swing around and bat right-handed against Orozco after striking out looking in the seventh inning, batting left-handed against Gooden. Mazzilli representing the tying run as the Mets lead by two, five to three. Nobody out, ninth inning. Mazzilli batting better left-handed than he is right-handed. Only 143 from the right side as opposed to 256 left-handed. Well hit, but it's going to be foul down the left field line. Foul by a bunch. And hit a bunch, too. Lee really turned on that fastball. But just a long strike, and it's one and one. by Carter. Two balls, one strike. Probably a little tougher for Gary to come out like that to his left than it is to his right because his right knee is much worse than his left knee. He's got to push off that one. Even though your glove's on your left hand. <laughs> right. Left. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> and nobody on base, you can just fall over there. <laughs> Fouled out of play down the right field line and the count two and two. And plus from a left-handed pitcher, you are looking for that breaking ball down and in. Anticipation is the name of the baseball game. Barry Bonds there. Be interesting to see if Mazzilli gets on, whether Bonds will be bunting. Usually don't bunt to tie, but Orozco very tough on a left-handed hitter. 
And Bonds, although he looks to be a good hitter, is a young left-handed hitter at that. Two and two to Mazzilli. Belliard at first with nobody out. Just inside. Three and two. Lee Mazzilli has walked five times as a pinch hitter. He's not pinch hitting here. He struck out as a pinch hitter in the seventh. But he has an excellent eye at the plate. He will not swing at a ball. Popped it up, drifting out of play behind the New York dugout. So the count will remain three and two. Seems like a long time ago that Maz was the matinee idling dartle, uh, idle darling of the Mets. <laughs> He's been replaced in that capacity by Ron Darling. up demonstrating that good eye that you talked about Tim and the runners now will be at first and second with nobody out the tying run on base Orozco getting a pep talk from Gary Carter Mike Diaz is going to be the pinch hitter and Mike Diaz hit a home run against the Mets last week last Sunday as a matter of fact against Sid Fernandez. So he's facing a left hander here. He hit it in the seventh inning a three run shot against Sid, a game in which the Mets won. But I guess that you could toss that bunting theory right out the window. You don't normally t uh, bunt to tie on the road anyway. And there's that one home run a three run shot off Sid Fernandez last Sunday. Diaz batting a little better than that as a pinch hitter. He's four for 16 for a 250 average with that one home run and five of his six RBIs have come in a pinch hitting role. So David Johnson and Mel Stottlemyre with their wheels turning as Diaz stands in against Orozco. He represents the go ahead run and there is still nobody out here in the ninth inning. Santana comes in now. As you may have seen earlier, there was a complete infield conference on the mound while Diaz was being announced. Ball misses inside, ball one. Mike giving a long, hard look to third base coach Gene Lamont. Sisk, the right-hander, Randy Neiman, the left-hander, throwing for New York. Second, Mazzilli at first. And the bases are loaded. Well, I don't think Davey Johnson's going to make a move here. Even with Bill Amon, a right handed hitter up. Johnny Ray is a much poorer hitter. 
from the right side than he is from the left side. I think Davey's going to go out just to talk to him. Bob Kipper is coming into the game to pinch run for Mike Diaz at first base. Kipper carrying the go ahead run for the Pirates. And the Mets will play the infield, of course, in double play depth. The runner at third is only the fourth run of the game. They do have a, a two run lead. But remember, nobody out. And Bill Allman runs pretty well even though he will be running from the right side. Mazzilli at second is the tying run. Allman hitting 258, six homers, 18 RBIs. And a nice pickup by Carter on ball one. And an important pickup right there. Much tougher for the fastball. This is a good play right there. Much tougher to pick that fastball than it is a breaking ball because you don't anticipate the fastball in the dirt. Fastball lofted to center field. Len Dykstra out. Belliard tagging at third. Mazzilli tagging at second. Mazzilli not going, and Belliard will come on in with the fourth Pirate run of the night. On the sacrifice fly in an RBI for Bill Allman, his 19th of the year. But the Mets will take that. They will take an out in that situation because the run that scored is not the important run. One thing to keep in mind right here. Mazzilli did not deem this deep enough for him to run. Belliard scores, but big deal. The thing to keep in mind is Mazzilli at second. Mazzilli has told me over and over again what a challenge it is for him to steal third base. So you really got to watch him at second. He runs well. And here's Johnny Ray batting from the right side. And he looks at a fastball outside for ball one. Ray is 0 for 4. He is struck out, flied out, grounded into a double play, and reached on catcher's interference. 0 for 3. Ball two outside. Roscoe having a hard time finding the strike zone has walked two after giving up the leadoff base hit to Raphael Belliard who scored. Popped up but it's going to be out of play. Two balls one strike. Ray's hitting 345 left handed and only 268 right handed. And as you mentioned earlier, Timmy, both his home runs came as a left handed hitter as well. And he fouls it straight back in the count, even at two and two. Mazzilli at second. Bob Kipper pinch running for Mike Diaz at first. Bill Robinson trying to bring Daryl Strawberry in in right field and Strawberry trying to bring Dykstra with him. Because if he does drive the ball the other way, he will not hit the ball a long way. And that's proper defense. And he just got a piece of it to stay alive. Like he almost took that ball right out of Carter's mitt. Well, he hit Carter's mitt his first time up tonight on an interference call. One of the two Met errors on the evening, the other by Ray Knight, Ray's second error of the year. Sid Bream, who homered earlier in the game off Gooden, is on deck. A fly ball down the right field line that's going to slice out of play. 
So the count still two and two. The Bill Robinson moved Len Dykstra in, and now Len Dykstra is <laughs> drifting back to where he was before he was moved in. He's really too deep right now. Johnny Ray cannot drive a ball that far on a line, and that's what you concern yourself with. Fouled away again the other way. If you take note of the last two swings where Johnny Ray hit the ball the other way, even though John can punch the ball out of the ballpark if he pulls it, but everybody's pull side, for the most part, almost everybody, their pull side is their strong side because they're really hitting against that front leg. Breaking ball high, and the count is full. Three and two to Johnny Ray. Runners at first and second with one out. One run is in here in the ninth to make it five to four New York. Sid Bream, the on-deck hitter. I think Jim Leland will send the runners. Johnny Ray, the toughest to fan in the National League last year. If you can't do it with him up there, you can't do it. And there they go. Ball four. Again, the bases are loaded and still only one out. Orozco has walked three here in the ninth inning. Now the tying run is at third base with only one out for a guy who can put the ball in the air, Sid Bream. Well, I'm a little surprised that Mike Brown and the pinch hitter in this situation. Mike Brown, a strong right-handed hitter, and Sid Bream lefty against lefty, and Orozco, as we said earlier, one of the toughest pitchers in the National League against a left-handed hitter. up into short left field. Mazzilli's going to tag. Here comes Foster to make the catch. Here comes the throw. It's way offline, and the game is tied. I should say Wilson in left field and not Foster. Mookie did a good job of getting behind the ball and coming up on it, but he threw it up the third baseline. Well, Mookie, of course, with that arm operation, and this is not that deep, but Mazzilli taking a chance in the throw-off line, and he scores easily. Watch the throw. Watch what Carter has to do, the throw way off line. I'll tell you, in a situation like that, if, if Wilson throws the ball tonight, you use the cutoff man, and you use the cutoff man's arm instead of Knight's arm. Wilson tried to come all the way with that ball, and Wilson is simply not strong enough, his arm not strong enough, to make a throw all the way home. So the proper play really is to hit the cutoff man, and I think Knight would have cut it to relay it to Carter. But the game is tied four, or rather 5-5, with two runs by Pittsburgh here in the ninth, and now here's R.J. Reynolds, who is 0 for 4. Reynolds also turned around to bat right-handed against Orozco, and Jesse out in front, 0-2. A base hit, a walk, another walk to load the bases, a sacrifice fly for one run, then another walk to load the bases again, and a second sacrifice fly. Runners at first and second. Two out. And strike three called on R.J. Reynolds, who has struck out three times tonight. The inning is finally over, but Orozco walks four and gives up two runs, and the game is tied 5-5 as we go to the bottom of the ninth after this for Delta Airlines. R.J. Reynolds, who's out of there as he made the last out of the inning, and a new pitcher is Pat Clements. And there are the numbers on Pat. Oh, and one, so Dwight Gooden will not be credited with his ninth win of the year. It's now up to Jesse Orozco and the left-hander facing Len Dykstra, who is put in there in the double switch. So Reynolds is in center field. Reynolds isn't out of there. Bonds is out of there. Uh-huh. I'll get my players straight here sooner or later. So Clements will be hitting first, and Mike Brown will be hitting seventh. And Len Dykstra will be hitting first here in the ninth, but ninth in the batting order. 
Joe West, the home plate umpire, going over to get all the changes squared away with Pirate manager Jim Leland. Dykstra hitting 310, a homer and nine RBIs, batting for the first time tonight. Cecilio Guante pitched two thirds of an inning, struck out two and walked one. Clements, the fourth pitcher of the night for Pittsburgh. Ball one. Mookie Wilson and Wally Backman to follow for New York. 5-5. Five, five. There's Mookie on deck. We're in the bottom of the ninth inning. And a strike, one and one. I'll tell you one thing about this Pirate Ball Club. The Mets are 7-1 seven, seven and one against them, but only one game has been easy. That was a 7-0 shutout by Bobby Ojeda to open that five-game series last Thursday night in Pittsburgh. These guys are a much improved ball club. And they've had a lot of losses like that. Strike two to Dykstra, one ball, two strikes. They have battled all season long, really. They really have. They opened the game six games under 500 and 14 and a half games behind the Mets. A little check swing foul ball into the seats. So it's still one and two. Doug Sis continues to throw for the Mets. First baseline, Bream will take it and tag Dykstra. One away. And that'll bring up Mookie Wilson, who is one for four. Mookie with his third home run of the year, leading off the third inning. It was also his eighth RBI. One out, nobody on. Strike one. Mookie's raised his average 170 points since May 17th. And he bloops one into center field. It's going to fall for a base hit. The winning run on base for New York with one out in the bottom of the ninth inning. It's just right off the end of the bat. And Johnny Ray slipped going after it. But even had he not slipped, it's still a base hit. Wally Backman has worked on that push bunt from the right side all spring training. And Johnny Ray having to cheat towards second base. We'll see if Wally tries that play here. Well, it's a good time for it. You got Bream holding the runner at first. And Johnny Ray cheating towards second. If you can get it past the pitcher, you've got a base hit. But Wally, not squaring, takes outside for ball one. Well, you wouldn't square. You'd just try to push that ball by Clements. And the thing about a left-handed pitcher, Clements doesn't do it as much as as a lot of left-handers, but when a left-hander releases the ball, he falls toward third base. So that's even something else in your favor if you decide to push that ball between the first baseman and pitcher. Mookie, who has 11 stolen bases, chased back at first. Grounded foul, and the count one and one. Five, five, one out, bottom of the ninth. Tim Tuffle limbering up in the dugout with Keith Hernandez on deck. Kind of interesting. Strawberry would be the next scheduled hitter after Hernandez. Hmm. Jim Wynn now warming for Pittsburgh. All sorts of things happening out there. 
Mookie with a one out single to center is at first base. There's Jim Wynn. Nope. That's Don Robinson. One ball, two strikes to Backman. You were right, and I was wrong, Steve. That is Don Robinson out there. I thought it was Jim Wynn. Don back off that rehabilitation program. Nice going. I only knew that because I've known him for about 10 years, and I recognized him. But Wynn was up earlier. Tapped right out in front of the mound. Pena thought about going to second, but with Mookie's speed, he chose to go to first. Nobody was covering second. Nobody was covering. Rafael Belliard playing him to pull, and Pena, watch him look to second. Nobody's covering. Where in the world is Johnny Ray? But Pena has Wilson easily at second base if somebody's covering because of his strong arm. Well, he came out of there like the cat also. Yeah. He pounced on that ball. Johnny Ray was cheating towards second base. I think they're going to walk Hernandez. That's what I'd do. Robinson, a right-hander. They're in no hurry with two left-handed hitters coming up for New York, Hernandez and Strawberry. And Pena giving the signal that they are going to walk Hernandez. So it'll put runners at first and second with two out. Gosh, you have to wonder why Tim Tuffle was on that top step. Yeah, who would it be? He, <laughs> who's he there for? I don't know. Maybe it's some kind of a decoy. Tuffle, as you see, has sat back down. I think it was a decoy. I think that's exactly right. He brought out Tuffle to make manager Jim Leland think that Tuffle would be batting for Strawberry, but he didn't bite. So here's Daryl Strawberry, who is one for four. He doubled and stole a base in the eighth inning. 5-5 tie, two out, bottom of the ninth with runners at first and second. Mookie Wilson carries the winning run on swift legs. And a strike. Brown up with the ball, and the Mets win it six to five. <laughs> Daryl Strawberry's league leading ninth game winning RBI. Well, it's a game winning RBI, sure, but the confidence that it gives Daryl Strawberry to have that game winning RBI against a left handed pitcher. He has struggled all year against left handers. And Davey Johnson showing the confidence in him. I mean, who wouldn't show the confidence in him? I mean, he had a nasty pitch right there. Breaking ball about shoelace high. Check it out. Well, that is a nasty pitch. And he rifles it into right field, and Wilson scores easily. The Mets are now 13-5 and five in one-run games, and they have won their 40th game of the year. On this swing of the bat by Daryl Strawberry. <laughs> Bill Robinson picking him up in celebration. And the Mets battled back after trailing early. The Pirates battled back to tie it against Jesse Orozco in the ninth. And New York wins it in the bottom of the ninth with a two out base hit by Strawberry against a left hander. It's six to five New York. Orozco is the winner. He is now three and two on the year, and that young man, Pat Clements, suffered the loss. He is 0 and 2 on the year. Tim and I'll be right back to wrap it up 
Ralph standing by with Kiner's Corner for you. Six to five, New York, in the first of a four-game set.